back again. So this is another one of uh, mine un mind unveiled, and uh, with the stuff I didn't go into in my last one, like this is basically what I was uh, feeling. So what a coincidence! <laughs> what a synchronicity! <clears throat> All right. I'm sure it's just coincidence. No. That's that's not how this shit works. We work on the etheric level. So we, we vibe with one another and we feel uh what is needed and the the muse becomes manifest in what is felt. So whenever we are, we have a clear connection, <laughs> communion. The uh, the inspiration comes, and the flow is allowed, and it happens. It just happens. It is happening, and we allow it to happen, and we encourage it to happen, and. By more and more of us doing so, this is having a ripple, a ripple effect. Even if people want to deny or um, get caught up in the fucking illusory system, they they can't help but having this subtle feeling, or this subtle, this little voice keep calling and beckoning. For them to return, return home, return back into the feeling, into the heart. So this one is, is beautiful. This is uh, connecting the exo and the uh, esoteric. And uh, I have not watched this yet. I watched like the first little 30 seconds of it. I'm like, yep, we're going to do this. But also, like, before, even before this, I, I wanted to uh, send send my energies out to uh, Angie. I just watched your your Cauldron video with, with your George experience. And that, that was fucking beautiful. You are an amazing storyteller, Angie. Uh, that was awesome to to listen to and to integrate uh and to feel like you you have you have this way with words and i've told you this before like you it just it takes us right into the moment right into the experience and at least for me i can't speak for anyone else but like i'm right there with you and also, I mean, of course, it has a lot to do with having similar life experiences, being able to relate and know what you're talking about on on deeper levels. So yeah, I've shared some stories, kind of not not quite like like that with with disembodied entities, but uh, just just some. Uh, what is the word? Crypto. <laughs> Some. I mean, it kind of ties back into this, actually, with the uh, parasitic energies, the vampirism, uh, the succubus and incubus. <laughs> and then also, I wanted to. <laughs> I looked at the time there. <laughs> so, uh, I also just watched Skyhopper's video. And, uh, there's a lot that, that I want to share there. Um, Ultimately, I trust that you know what you need to do, and uh, I, I I can see like you know the, the subtle realms that are happening. 
uh, in your situation. So, as you know, though, it is a process, and it will work itself out. But, you know, this always ties back down into the understandings and realizations of the root causalities what is happening within so anytime we have a dis-ease or blockage it's, it's a, a stagnation and especially uh, around the vagus nerve around your throat chakra your 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 neck um there are so many lymph nodes and uh energetics going on there especially once uh you you are able to start speaking your truth you're going to have certain layers happen to where You are faced with things that want to uh, quiet you. But uh, as as per why I, I have this video on display here, it, it's not we 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 should not get caught up in, in the exo and the outer manifestations because the roots are always within. Uh, yeah, so I did not know that you were uh, going to have surgery or go to the hospital. Um, if you didn't already know people, I I am um, very much against hospitals and uh, <clears throat> like I said in my last one uh, the people they have good intentions they they are believing the things that they're being told they are uh, they have been led to believe that they're helping which uh, couldn't be further from the case uh, all you have to do is like spend some time in the hospital uh, God. And of course, you know, every hospital is going to be different, but So they, they want to keep things clean and sanitary and, and it always has this, you know, specific smell in hospitals, right? Uh, this, this sanitation uh, destroys all bacteria, so the good bacteria cannot heal. So there's not really any healing going on in hospitals. There is uh, treating symptoms and uh, the outer manifestations, uh, ignoring the root causalities. And oftentimes, uh, they, they, they entrain within the people they have working for them there to uh, become desensitized to death. I also am curious as to how many cemeteries are in close proximity to hospitals. Because I imagine it's probably a pretty high number. Once again, that's for a reason. There's a little, very little subtle things that, that you are not aware of that happens whenever someone dies. Uh, the things are extracted. Where does the blood go? And uh, we think we are signing up for, you know, oh, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give my organs to science. You don't, you don't understand where, where that's really going to. 
uh, science is one of these things that has been corrupted and uh, it was already corrupted from the get-go with engaging scientism and making it an occulted uh, on once another occulted aspect of a reality and this is this is exactly same thing that's happened with so many organizations that have good intentions that start out good uh they, they have been allowed to you know uh extend in, in, into the community and surrounding areas and then the corruption sets in because uh this this system already knows it's, it's already <laughs> well developed so it allows the good to spread forth and then it goes into those organizations such as freemasonry shout out to marty leeds check out marty leeds he will tell you the fucking same same exact thing So uh, it always makes me very uh, wary, but it's especially when, when I'm hearing that uh, some of my close, uh, very close uh, f family of the heart are, are going to hospitals. You're, ooh, you're, you're dancing with death big time. Man. I've heard so many stories of people going into hospitals just for simple, simple things. And they, they don't come out of there. There's, there's probably thousands, probably millions at this point people that go into hospitals for simple simple procedures and oh something happened they messed up this this is absolutely regular shit and then they're taught that oh mistakes happen uh don't get too caught up in it um you know deaths deaths happen they are disconnected from the humanity from the reality of what is happening So yeah, I got to it a little late. I apologize, Skyhopper, Paul. Um, so uh, probably you have already been through your your what you have been through. I uh, wish the best for you always. But uh, my advice is what what would have been to. Engage your lymphatics, uh, your blockages in your lymph system. Uh, there are tools that you can use, gua sha, and also this little, like, a micro tool that has a... a little, like, spokes and spikes on it, and you roll that up and down uh, your skin. It's going to make your skin very red and irritated, but that's going to stimulate your lymphatics and, and and the blood flow see uh juni has you on honey and turmeric and that's what i recommend for a lot of people and a lot of things i would also recommend to add into that uh ginger lemon and apple cider vinegar you also have to, uh, even even post-procedure, uh, you have to have compresses on your neck. Um, you can do it if, if you have any aged orin, uh, do compresses on your neck with, uh, on the sides of your neck, like where those veins are, the arteries on the sides there. 
and uh, you can also do uh, certain certain clays on there is going to be very good in, in sending in certain minerals that you need but also extracting into the clay uh, things that are excess you can also uh, kind of create your own clay like a, a red, red clay and then also throw in some uh, shilajit and with that any kind of uh, volcanic energies that you can access even if it's just rubbing obsidian on you holding obsidian up onto your neck and once again I'm, I'm reminded of uh, Robert Kassar and you know he gives out very good information and I mean, it, it's just like what he says. It's like, once you once you allow fear to set in because like uh, things get out of control, like you you go to these places like hospitals, and and then you're fucked. You are fucked. As in, you're playing Russian roulette. You could get, you know. Um, something that kind of mediates and uh, may help on, on surface levels and in, in that surface level healing maybe you'll finally you know your body will finally catch on and actually heal itself but that's what's happening is that you are, you are healing yourselves back in tapping back into the power of, of your own beingness or what the body does not having a disconnect anymore with with body and mind and what is happening what is being told to you your pains and diseases they're telling you something and it's only for you it's not for someone else to tell you oh hey this is how you heal it this is what this means. It, it's kind of the same thing with dream interpretation. People telling you, oh, hey, this is what this means in symbology. No, like this. It, it's meant for you. And if you want to share that with people, that's great. But, and I, and I understand, I understand that once uh, things get out of hand, and we uh, start to freak out. We oftentimes go towards things that we're led to believe are of aid or benefit. But uh, you will find out one way or another. Even if it's under the ground you'll finally see and find out <clears throat> so yes and then I'm just gonna uh, throw this out here so that uh, if anyone has any kind of disease this is a heal all Cedar nut oil, and you get the purest, purest kind that you can find. Uh, this ties back into uh, turpentine as well, and uh, finding the purest form of turpentine that you can, uh, supplementing on on minuscule amounts of that at first, but then uh, with the cedar nut oil, um, you have to do a little bit at first and then go go a little bit harder and this is how, how it is with most things you want to introduce it to your body a little bit small amounts at first and then you want to really amp it up and step it up and then you kind of want to uh, peter off so it's like 
Amp it up. And then you go back down. And for the cedar nut oil, you want to get uh, you want to get it from Russia if you want the purity. And if you are looking for any kind of uh, seeds, if you're looking for heirloom seeds, you want to get that from Russian homesteads. So uh, yeah, this uh, this cedar nut oil is going to be a little expensive, but uh, if you really want to heal and reunite the physical and the mental and the spiritual and re-enliven on a next level, you got to go with The top level uh, cedar nut oil that you can find. You can apply that to your skin as well. To your throat. Wherever you need it. And we'll get into, uh, you know, even deeper level healing, uh, utilizing nature, utilizing your seeds. How to go about doing that, and I will, I will make a video showing that, uh, showing, showing me doing this process, and then imbuing the seed with my DNA and placing it in the earth, allowing the intentions to uh, be felt and sent out, allowing all the realms and spheres of uh, influence and causality, uh, a part of the makeup of, what, of why you are a human. Paying homage and engaging all of these things. This is why we're here. We're, we're meant to engage all these things and hone them in, yoke them, balance them, find the harmony. <clears throat> Alright, so we're going to get into this. Uh, I, I've done videos on, on, on this kind of stuff. Uh, how I feel about the parasites and uh, this is a multi-layered thing so once you first start to engage it like your body is going to be so full of them that uh, they freak the fuck out and so you will not want to uh, look into these things until eventually you know you're you're sick and tired of being sick and tired and you you start to engage this stuff on 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 some level, and you start to realize that it works. That expelling toxins and toxicity and uh, parasitic control, what effect that has on your mind, the clarity that happens, the things that you become opened up to, remembering. This is a subject that I haven't seen much info on. Is it possible that there's a link between demonic entities and the negative parasitic beings that live in our bodies? There's some really intriguing... And also, uh, Mind Unveiled, they, they kind of just unveiled <laughs> their, their faces uh, in, in one of their more recent videos. And uh, they're, they're, I mean... I'm very happy that they decided to do that and to <laughs> express what they needed to express. And they are both such, such beautiful beings. You, you can just, you don't even need to hear them uh, talk. And in that video, you can just see in their eyes. The, 
from the work that has been done, the, the clarity and the purity. But yes, uh, you have you haven't seen, like I said, you haven't seen anything because uh, you haven't you haven't really uh, looked deep enough into it. But also, one of the things that they mention uh, in their video where they actually show themselves is that you know a lot of the things that they're kind of presenting is that they want to learn more about it as well. So they're just kind of uh, showing the process and the journey that they are on. But yes, these two things are not separated. This thing right here is this thing. But uh, and whenever I talk about like outside influences, I'm talking about things that have... Uh, become masters at engaging and manipulating the things that are already inside of you. So it's all within, but why the manipulation is able to occur is because of our blind spots. We are blind to the, to so much that is within us. And these parasites are there. Yes, a lot of them are there for a reason. And they dissipate once we bring that awareness of why they are there in the first place. A lot of times that's all it takes. And then a lot of them will dissipate. But <laughs> there are, there is a lot of fucking layers of this parasitic control. Parasitic and toxic infestation that is happening in, in the body of the human. And the more light and awareness that is gained, that is acknowledged of the causalities then these things are no longer needed. But a lot of times they stay or used to attaching on regardless. So utilizing things like cleanses and uh, colonics or enemas or like I said previously turpentine utilizing certain wor uh, herbs like wormwood, calamus Things that can uh, encourage the parasites to uh, lose their grip and then we can flush them. But this isn't going to do a damn thing if you don't understand why they are there in the first place. You can flush out all the fucking demons and parasites you want. But if you don't know why they got there, how they got there in the first place, they are going to manifest again time and time again over and over again. This is, this is why we have to bring uh, the light forth into the dark places inside of us. This is how we regain control. And the parasites have... Uh, the parasites, uh, the, the fungus, uh, well, the, the negative fungus, negative as in uh, non-beneficial, these things have... Uh, an effect upon the mind. So they, uh, whenever, whenever, uh, and, and most people, you know, they're very weak in the mind, so they think that they are hungry, they think they are craving something, they, they seek things that, um, something else is, is kind of suggesting or telling them, manipulating. them into going towards certain avenues and going t towards certain things that engage and feed 
things that they are not aware that is happening inside them and this is goes uh this goes beyond food even this goes into uh uh the the true essence of food which is energy and uh, emotion so uh we see people who are you know crazy bipolar or they're always um drama queens and they are feeding every time uh you see a drama queen they are feeding a parasite inside of them and that's just the reality of it and you, you don't have to take my word for anything please don't please do your own research please uh rid yourself of uh the control systems that you are unaware of and then once you do so you're able to see how other people react and why they are reacting in those ways and then uh, if you take it a step further like I have and you tell these people straight out and it's the same it's the same shit if you, if you tell them they have demons if you tell them they have parasites that those things inside them, especially if you have a resonance in your voice of um, of a knowingness of I have rid myself of these things, you have these things in you, those things fucking feel it, and those people will fucking flip shit on you. They don't even know what the fuck's happening. They they go blank in the mind and in uh, in their eyes. You can see it. you can see the disconnect happen, and then they just go crazy. And that's because these things have such a hold on them. They do not want to let go of it. And they are they have been, become so comfortable in allowing these things to dictate, control their emotions, their energies, uh, their pathways of what they feed upon. That they just give in. People just give in because they don't have any kind of a, really a deep level of discernment. Or any kind of dedication or a cultivation of an awareness. Being connections that we think deserve to be explored. Many of you, even those who actually like this channel, will likely be dismissive of this information or label this as pseudoscience. The truly curious and ambitious, though, will undoubtedly see the value in the message and personal stories shared with this presentation. When we talk about demons, what are we talking about? Evil spiritual entities? Or are they just a figment of our imagination? Well, I would say they are very real. And not only are they spiritual beings, but they can manifest into this world in many ways. And one of those ways is through parasitic organisms. Ah, uh, there's just a lot there that's like, uh... I appreciate the questioning, and it's... It just comes back down to experience. And absolutely, uh, we can manifest anything into reality and whenever the mind is strong enough and the will is there, things can manifest very rapidly. The manifestation is the parasites, is the things that have a negative, uh, as a non-beneficial growth pattern, a sucking away of the uh, life essence. And I'm not coming from a place where I don't know what I'm talking about with, you know, uh, seeing demonic entities engaging these entities. Uh, and, and even well before I knew anything about parasites uh, engaging uh, visual uh, demonic uh, possession and entities and 
especially whenever we are young that's that's why so so much uh, happens whenever we are young and so many traumas happen and why so many people oftentimes can't remember very much about their childhood is because uh, your body kind of uh, wants to protect itself uh, and the mind encapsulates and stores things in different areas especially whenever we are used to not being encouraged to dive down into the things that have traumatized us and to so that we can finally heal them to uncover and recover ourselves remember the aspects that have been forgotten So whenever we are, whenever we are young, uh, we are going to experience uh, the outer manifestations because our our imagery, um, our imagination is more pure. It's more, uh, it's faster. It's more connected with source. So we are going to see things uh, and experience things on the outside, not realizing because we are not taught these things. That what is happening is within. So we are, we are witnessing the outer manifestations of what's going on within. It's a slow uh, creep that is happening up inside of us. And eventually uh, it takes hold and um, it starts to eat our minds. It starts to eat our, our imaginations. That is, that is what is being fed upon more than anything uh yes our energy but our our mind is, is being fed upon that's the true parasite and demon that is happening in the human construct This is why so often you see people uh, rapidly grow old, rapidly degradate, and develop certain diseases and uh, lose their memory, lose their faculties of their mind. And it doesn't even have to do with age, really. It doesn't. You can see it in young people as well. And you can also see in young people that whenever they have severe diseases, whenever they are introduced with a healthy uh, gut biome and a healthy bacterium, that disease goes away. Whenever the root uh, causalities are targeted or more closely targeted, that is when you see true healing and true transformation. Let's start with what are the common symptoms of demon possession? One, they have the power to influence your mind and to fill it with destructive thoughts. Which is kind of what I was hinting at in my last video. And what I just said with, with what happens whenever someone is filled with parasites and filled with a lack of fire, a lack of awareness, a lack of willingness to live. People aren't really afraid of death. They are afraid of life, and that's because of the things inside of them uh, that are holding on to their fear. They want to engage. They want people to engage the fear so that they do not engage the life, all right? And we out here saying, fucking live. Like, forget what other people tell you about the right and wrong way. There's no fucking right and wrong way. Just fucking live. And eventually you'll, you'll catch, you know, a groove and a flow. And 
you'll find your way. But for right now, fuck everything and just fucking live. Engage that life. Engage that fire. Yes, like, seek balance, but... A lot of times we have to engage the opposite of, of one polarity so that we can be reminded of that balance point. We don't want to keep flip-flopping back and forth on, on both sides of the polarity. And that is an addiction that most people have. But whenever a lot of us have spent um, a, quite a bit of our lifetime in trauma and pain and suffering and, and disillusionment, then we're going to need we're going to need a certain uh, time period where we emit the fire and we just go a little crazy as in we just let it out we let it happen whatever needs to happen happen however it needs to manifest and in that intense manifestation uh also happens um also is allowed a release that that has been very much needed And once that happens, then we can regain our balance and our homeostasis. So if you go off the rails from time to time, don't get, don't beat yourself up over it. Recognize that sometimes we need to do that so that we can remind ourselves where the balance is. Two. It can have an influence on the dream realm, manifesting as shadow beings during sleep paralysis. Three. They absolutely will, will have a uh, an effect on the dream realms, and even even when you start to uh, dive into an awareness where where you're able to be a little bit more lucid in your dreams. You're still going to have narratives play out uh, repeatedly. Certain things happen uh, within the dream realm that are hinting at, you know, what's going on inside of your body, what, what has been going on <laughs> for a while. And then the, uh, the shadow beings, he said, with sleep paralysis. That is not just solely with sleep paralysis. Uh, that is with um, accessing states where your your vision uh, becomes uh, extra sensory. Uh, you can um, a lot of times we can just see this in our day to day in our peripheral vision, but especially whenever you're uh, awake during the dark hours, during the witching hours. And if you utilize uh, certain plant spirit medicines, but this is with and without them, uh, you can engage these, uh, experience these shadow beings. And once again, it's a reflection of what's going on inside of you. You are the fucking epicenter. This is the main point here. You are the focal point you are the epicenter and this is a hard thing to really finally come to realize just how powerful you are this is like the the hardest fucking thing to be honest it's the hardest fucking thing to finally come to realize just how powerful you are and yeah it is scary it's fucking scary to realize it and, and then to realize The linguistics and the patternings and the imagery that we've been led into believing that we have been taught into projecting
Possession usually involves becoming sick and constantly tired. Yep. And we can have moments where where you know we we are fatigued and tired and whatnot. But if it's constantly happening to happening to you, if you are constantly uh, struggling with with being sick or having a lack of energy. There's things going on inside of you that you are not paying attention to. You're allowing things outside of you to continue to distract you from what's going on inside. And this this is going to also, you know, come back down to A flow of energy in the body, so whenever we have stagnations in the body, certain areas are going to be more hot or more cold, or we'll feel a pulse stronger in certain areas of the body where it's trying to heal, it's trying to loosen up uh, the, the blockage that is happening. And oftentimes this is going to manifest in, in our guts and certain organs, so you can feel, you can press down deep. Um, into your abdomen and you can feel where there is a stronger pulse. This is where your body is trying to release something. It's very, very important to get your soles of your feet on the soil. To get as much skin as you can in direct sunlight for as long as you can to be in nature for as long as you can to breathe in the all the natural essences and the ethers to reattune your body to this vibration of this living matrix and not become a part and a cog of this death matrix that you are taught is the westernized civilized society. That is a succubus society. Its whole purpose is to suck your life and your mind out of you. And it's a slow death. It's a slow sucking that happens. For a lot of people, it, 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 it creeps up. They don't even realize that it's happening until, until they can't remember anymore. I'm constantly being surrounded by people that can't remember something that they did just several minutes ago and they will say oh well I'm just I'm so caught up I I have so many things going on like I only have I only have so much bandwidth to put put into this right now it's like dude you should be able to remember the things that you just did if you can't even remember your day your hour your minute how are you going to remember who and what you really are? And most oftentimes, these people that I experience this with, they have those pot bellies. They have the parasites. They have the things inside of them that they are not paying attention to. your spiritual powers and ambition begin to diminish.
this is, yeah, this comes right back down to it. Um, I have experienced and witnessed uh, many high-level intuitive and empathic, and I don't like that word empathic, really dislike that word, just because of the attachment that people have with it. It's fucking ridiculous. The uh, separations uh, are just fucking ridiculous. And the attachments that people have. <clears throat> but uh, especially whenever certain powerful individuals who are uh, very keen to the subtle uh, realms. Whenever they give in to the uh, system and are put upon certain opiates and certain medications... Their spiritual powers um, disappear. And it is a lasting effect. It takes a qu quite a bit of time and focus and energy to rid yourself of the pathways inside of your body that were shut off. ambition your your the feeling to, to want to live and and thrive and, and become alive that becomes less and less and less and uh, you start to numb yourself more and more and more and you start to get comfortably numb within this and I mean you can't really blame people for, for this because look at the society that we're, we're we, most people live in uh, the things that they are indoctrinated into believing uh, the things that they are encouraged to put their energy out to thinking that they are seeking help but in actuality they are going towards a vampire and a succubus that has the mask of people that think that they are doing good, but the, the, the people have been hoodwinked and tricked. And so that they continue to trick, you know, the rest of the people. And this is, this is the setup. You, you trick uh, the, the right kind of people in the right places, and it will just trickle down, and everyone will fall in line. And then you start to have some people that wake up. Well, there's already so many people that are asleep and indoctrinated. So uh, that all of that energy will come, come down upon the few that start to wake up and realize what's going on. It will force them to either give in or get out in... in many different ways to check out to check themselves out which I don't blame a lot of people for doing so because uh, this is this is a fucked up world and uh, it is it is very hard and sometimes uh, things that, should, that have no business being inside of us to begin with, they become our own voice and we trick ourselves into thinking that that is our voice and then we end up doing things that uh, are not really us and it's not what we, what we really wanted but it's just an escape, it's an exit. And my cat is dreaming right now. <sighs> mm. 
and I feel the dream. So yeah, I'll end it with that. Um, things that are happening to us that, that we think are out of our control are actually signals and signs and posts uh, signposts and way showers to to what is happening it's, it's a mirror we, we can choose to engage something as in oh this is happening outside of me I'm going to have a reaction I'm going to react and be uh, triggered or offended or we can be like, hey, this is this is a mirror right now. What is happening inside of me that I am seeing this? What what is the message here for me that I can take take from this and integrate what is happening? Transmute. So we be out here transmitting the transmutations, encouraging y'all, y'all, to do the inner work and continue the path towards inner clarity and uh, realization and a cultivation of what's going on inside of you. And whenever you do that, you're tapping into what's going on inside of all of us, and we feel it. Even if we can't speak it, a lot, a lot of people can't don't don't have the words and, and feelings and the uh, the the ambition to be brave enough to put it into words and put it out there. But everyone feels it. So whatever you do on the microcosm has an effect on the macrocosm. Believe that. Believe that. Feel that. Keep doing your inner work and keep cultivating this awareness. Meditate. Gravitate towards this levity of Clarity and purity. And this is this is this is building the bridge here. Peace.